road. Lord knows oh, where that is. Good where morning. Is what a beautiful day. Beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. See, she can sing. You maybe not. Okay. Psalms 45. I will not canter this. Missy, how about you? Canter you? <laughs> My heart is overflowing with a goodly word. Mm. I address my works to the sovereign. My tongue is the pen of a speedy writer, and you're more handsome than the sons of men, and favor has been poured upon your lips. Therefore, Elohim has blessed you forever. Gird your sword upon your thigh, almighty one. Wow. Your excellency and your splendor, and ride purposely in your splendor on the matter of truth and humility and righteousness and let your right hand lead you to awesome matters your arrows are sharp in the heart of the sovereign's enemies peoples fall upon you your throne o elohim is forever and ever the scepter of your reign is a scepter of straightness Hallelujah. you have loved righteousness and hated wrongness Therefore, Elohim, your Elohim has anointed you with the oil of gladness and more than your companions. All your garments are myrrh and aloes, cassia. Mm -hmm. Out of the palaces of ivory, stringed instruments have made you glad and daughters of sovereigns are among your precious ones. At your right hand stands the sovereignness of gold from Ophir, Ophir. Listen, O daughter, and see, and incline your ear, and forget your own people and your father's house, and let the sovereign delight in your loveliness, because he is your master. Bow yourself before him. Mm. And the, the daughter of Zor with a gift, and the rich among the people seek your favor. The daughter of the sovereign is all esteemed within the palace. Her dress is embroidered with gold and she brought to the sovereign in embroidered works. Maidens, her companions following her, are brought to you. They're brought with gladness and rejoicing and they enter the sovereign's palace. Instead of your fathers are your sons when you appoint princes in all the earth. I cause your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, the people praise you forever and ever. Woo! Amen. Wow. Amen. Can you imagine what that sounded like when it was written? It was written, it says it was set to lilies. So that must be a song. It was, it was, it was written out by the descendants of Korok. It's a love song, but, but it was written as a song. Can you imagine what that sounded like? Mm. <laughs> it's beautiful to, beautiful to consider. Someone break out a leer. That's what happens. Happen. I know. I know. Ishka has a harp and, um, and she's learning to play that. And um, I would just love, I would love her. So does anybody play the harp here besides Ishka? <laughs> anybody? Miss, because Missy, I would you love can that. put a harp on your keyboard and make it sound like a harp, right? You can, you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, father, we come before you thank and thank you. you. Father, we submit our words, our thoughts, our okay. actions, our philosophies, all the things we think we're the smartest at. We just stop right now mm. and we surrender all of those, all preconceptions, any lies we've inherited. We lay them at your feet, Father, what we think yes. are truths and untruths. And look, Father, we just ask for what do you say? Mm. Father, what do you say? As we dive into the life of Sarah and Rebecca, we ask, Father, what do you say? Yeah. And how do we practically bright, bring that into our hearts and, and ignite morsels in us so that through the night and tomorrow we are excited and, and, inf and inf inflamed to, mm -hmm. to chase after you and to find the answers. Yes, yes, yes. It's just you, Father. It's just you. Thank you for filling this time with your spirit. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your anointed word. Thank you for these women, Father, that you know we cover in prayer. Yes, daily. yes. Father, I ask every woman from every corner of this planet that hears us. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you're going into their homes and bringing reconciliation. Yeah. Where hearts are broken today, Lord, with, with homes like in Kathy's homes where children have, have been taken back to their homes. Father, there's brokenness and there's hurt. I thank you, Father, that you come in and you're the restorer. 
Yes. Thank you that you bring comfort. Mm -hmm. That your Holy Spirit now would just light upon them, Father. Mm -hmm. And it will change, Lord, and they will wake up in the morning with joy. They will dance. Yes. To the song uh, only for tonight, Father, that your mm -hmm. joy is in the morning. We thank you for mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Mm, for every husband, Father, who has not... Uh, uh, had revelation of, of the truth of who you are in, in whatever capacity, whatever that looks like. Father, for every husband, we call his name out before your throne. For every son, for every daughter, for every mother, for every father, for every brother, for every sister, mm. for every friend, Father, we call their names out before your throne. And we say, Father God, we thank you for speaking life to them. We thank you for bringing restoration into their hearts for each one of us, Father. We pray life, life, life. Thank you, Father God, for speaking life to us, for restoring those things that have been broken and breached. And Father, for resurrecting the things that we thought were dead. And for putting to rest forever and cutting away from us those things that do not serve the kingdom. We just lay it all before you and we bless your mighty name. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you guys have a great day. We're out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. How lovely. It's beautiful. What a fun, what a fun chapter. We have really, this is. Is this your so favorite? Good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, Missy, I is it your favorite? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I have um I have decided that um my favorite is fluid and I'm not going to be a hater on myself. <laughs> hey, there's no this shame. is my no shame in this being my favorite. No. I mean what a matriarch Sarah was and and we and today we can even discuss some of the things that she did that we can look at and say, oh, my gosh, Father, I want to be that type of a woman in my family. I want my heritage. My gosh, you guys, we are here right now because of Sarah, because of what the Holy One did through her. He used her for us because we're in that when it says all the people's all the peoples of the earth will be blessed. We're in that. Talk about it. Talk about it. Heritage. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah, we get to see the rest of it's interesting that there's a lot of questions. We go, we start out right away and finding out that that after Isaac is is taken up to is ascended and there is debate fun and playful or serious <laughs> debate on whether he was actually was he told that he was to offer him as a sacrifice or was he just taken up to to present him to the lord as as if he were going to present him to move on in ministry was it i don't know there's wow. rabbinic there's rabbinic debate on this and so the word gets back to sarah that you know this is what he's done and she dies so there is debate this is all tradition. This is not in the word. I am not saying thus saith the Lord. There is, right. there is traditional verbal oral, oral history that says, you know, Sarah's heart was broken. And that, so Sarah, Sarah died from that. Sarah died from just mm -hmm. that. But what I love, cause all of that doesn't matter. <laughs> what I love is some of it's interesting if you're just wanting to nerd out and learn like some fun things, you know, like I like to go to a new place and I like to read about the history of that area. Who wrote the history? I don't know. Is it true? I don't know. But it's kind of, you know, I'm reading it. I'm I, what's fact is that I'm standing there. This tree is green, you know, so that's we know the fact is the word and what we can read there. The mm -hmm. other things we can decide if we want to check them out or not. Yeah. But what is cool is that, um, She's 127 years old. And he, Very you know, cool. There is not an accident. And it's the, he doesn't just say she lived 127 years, mm -mm. right? He says 100 years, <laughs> 20 years, and seven years. Now, if we look backwards, I'm going to 
Caitlin, I'm going to get you, if I can find you, I'm going to mute you real quick. There you are. Um, what is what is interesting is that if you look at it upside down or backwards, what you see is you see this a seven year, you see three stages of life, right? We see right. the seven year old, a 20 year old, and then this hundred year old, um, these phases. <laughs> I know that's crazy, <laughs> but I mean, I feel like kind of when we're looking at the, when we're looking at the, uh, any of the word, it's almost like we have to look at everything upside, upside down, turn it around, look at it backwards. I mean, does anyone have any input on that, Misty? Anyone, anyone have input on this, these, why did he do? Why did they break it up? I think what I've heard in some of the um, like commentaries is about, you know, it's talking about her youth um, and that she was, you know, as vigorous as she was, you know, and beautiful as she was. So at a hundred, she was just as vigorous and beautiful as she was and innocent. I think the seven is she's as innocent mm -hmm. um, as when she was seven and as beautiful as when she was 20. Yes. I like that. Yes. I like that. That's the one I, I like the best too. I love that. It was, and it was that she continued and it was that she continued in her faith. And it was the reason it's, it's, you know, there's Hebraic concepts that we just don't understand that we could dig into and find out it's because it's three different times. They mention her age in three different stages. It's reinforcing that she continued on that childlike faith. She continued on in that child, her consistency yeah. to serve the Holy one. She yeah. continued on in all of that. And I know in, in, in reading, uh, Halisa, Dr. Halisa Elowine's commentary for this week, I barely, I just started it. Cause it's usually what I do on Saturdays is I'll try to dig in and then I just, ex my brain explodes. So I have to have the whole day to recuperate. So but I kind of just, she goes with a lot into the camels and what camels means and all that thing, but something jumped off the page that she said. And she said that Sarah was Abraham's partner in prophecy. Yeah. And I just, that made everything inside of me just like jump. It yeah. It made everything and jump. Yeah. And then Rebecca was Isaac's partner in prophecy. Right. The opposite side of that, we've heard, I, I mean, Deborah Flanagan talks about this often about Delilah. Here she has this warrior, this Samson, who's just, and he, this is a Nazarite. This is a man who's taken a vow to serve the, serve God. Now, did he have a little sexual indiscretions? Not part of the Nazarite vow. You know, did he, you know, did he have some issues? So did David, you know, that wasn't part of his, his giftings, or that wasn't part of his prophecy, but she knew the weakness to his prophecy. And it wasn't, physically the cutting of the hair it was cutting the covenant and stopping that covenant so when he cut the his hair it would say i've stopped having this lifelong covenant we right. see sarah she's had a lifelong covenant at seven at 20 at 100 127 she's at all these years she's doing same happened with samson and he had these things but what but what would signify him it wasn't just that oh she got him to cut his hair if she got him to back out of the covenant yeah she was right. his partner in his prophecy mm -hmm. and had she supported that prophetic call on his life she would have had a warrior for life yeah and a legacy for life and a legacy for life yeah. children who would have had that legacy herself mm -hmm. that would have had that legacy her legacy wouldn't have been that she was the one who um caused him to to leave leave his calling you know, mm -hmm. temporarily, yeah. but mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. So, so self-reflection. Oh, ouch. We're going to go real practical, right? <laughs> it doesn't have to be a husband or it could be. Yeah. Is it a boss? Yeah. Is it a sister? Is it a brother? Who are you called to be their prophetic partner? Does someone right away jump to your mind? They should. Mm. Is there a call that your prophetic partner was someone? You may not like them. Let's get really real. But you know that you know they might be hairy and smell like camel hair. <laughs> and you may have never seen them before, but you're called to be a prophetic partner to them. Rebecca had mm. never seen Isaac before, and she accepted the call to be his prophetic partner without even seeing him. We're yeah. called to be a prophetic partner of Messiah, Yeshua. Mm hmm We've never seen him before and he's come to get us as a bride and he sent a bride price for us. 
to come get us and to follow. And we've never seen, he said, blessed are those who've never seen and they still believe. That's us. I really believe Rebecca, as we read through this this weekend and as you're gathering this, we are Rebecca's. We've never seen and yet we're going to say, I'm going to do it. Do I, what else do I need to do? I want to, and how do we walk that out? And what does being a servant look like? How do I water the camels for people? How do I do all the things? Yeah. I think that Rebecca continued the legacy of Sarah. She was yes. like, I mean, Sarah was a servant leader. Mm -hmm. She was a servant leader. And, and when the Holy one blessed her with Isaac, um, she was a good mom and she trained him up well. And her, the, the, her tent was a place of shalom. That's why Isaac brought Rebecca in and put her in the tent, her mother's tent, his mother's tent, because it was a place where he had been raised up, where he had been nurtured, where he had been trained up in the things of the Holy one. And, um, and, uh, and it's like, that's her legacy. Her legacy continued on in, in, um, in Rebecca and Rivka. Yeah. It's beautiful. And Sarah, you know, there's, and we talk about the legends and, um, and the things that the sages talk about, um, uh, like Charlie was saying, it's not, it's not, uh, uh, it's not the Bible. It's, it's the, it's the commentary around it. It's the traditions. It's the stories that have been passed on from generation to generation that Sarah had a, that there was a, a Shekinah, there was a, a, a fire of Shekinah over her tent. Um, and that um, her beauty was, was the internal beauty of uh, walking in the ways of the Holy One. And that her bread never, her bread didn't go stale during the week. And she would come across uh, on Shabbat, she would bake new bread, but the, but the old bread didn't go stale. Um, and that her candles didn't, didn't burn out. I mean, these are just stories. These are traditions. But, but the neat thing about that is that it's really like, it's really putting us into the mindset that, well, maybe she was reflective of the, of the Mishkan. Maybe that's where, maybe that's where that the glory, the candles, the showbread, uh, the life service, the servant leader, maybe that's what, maybe that's what that was reflecting. It's kind of like, it's kind of neat. I love seeing symbolism of things. Mm -hmm. um, it's like the camels, the 10 camels that were sent. Abraham sent the 10 camels with his servant to go find the wife. Well, camels can represent people. Camels can represent a congregation. 10 camels can represent a congregation of people. Um, there's lots of things that you can look about that. Wow. So it was like, it was like the congregation was coming to get her and the congregation brought her back. It's like the people, you know, all of us gathered, went and got her and we all brought her back. Kind of like what happens with the bride, with the bridegroom calling of the bride and then the people go gather her and bring her to the groom right it's kind of like that so anyway just thoughts just fun thoughts <laughs> i think it's beautiful and i think it's beautiful i think it's interesting too is when they he did go get when he did get rebecca or rivka when he went to get her i think it's interesting do you find do you remember laban does anyone remember mm -hmm. laban yeah. we'll hear more from laban <laughs> Laban, Laban part two. <laughs> yeah, we do feel here Laban start starts to to show his colors right away of who he is. Because right away he's like, well, we need to keep her for a year and 10 months. We're going to keep her a little longer. We need to keep her. Does anyone miss that part? Does it, mm. I had never, I had never read that before. I mean, I think it just got put in there. So check your Bibles. Pretty sure you got the update. If you downloaded the update, that's new this year. It just got yeah. in there. But he, <laughs> I was like, he was trying to negotiate right away, yeah. negotiate when they could take her when, and, and she was like, I want to go. She knew she accepted and she wanted to go. And then she was blessed and she was sent out. And I just, I just can't, I'm sitting a long time in this. I just really can't get past the beauty of the, of the bride being sent after. Yeah. And that. <laughs> 
he she says yes and then she comes to him and she's never seen him and i just can't i want you to feel that in your own self and you get to partner your prophetic partner is the holy one is yeshua yeah. messiah that's who your prophetic partner is that's who you get to a partner with and then again we talk about now if we can speak to the women here that are married your prophetic partner is your husband. What is the destiny that he's called the two of you to walk out together as a whole? As prophetic partners, are you going to be like Sarah and Rebecca? Or are you going to be like Delilah and expose his weaknesses and cause him to cut his covenant and cause him to stop his prophetic anointing? Or together, are you going to walk out this covenant promise and bring generations, whether it's physical generations or spiritual generations through the people that lives that you touch. Are you, how we, we get to choose women. That's a powerful position. Mm. It's so much responsibility. A lot of responsibility. It is. Yeah. I mean, I sit as a wife sometimes, you know, and I'm like, you're standing there in the middle of a situation. You're like, you have the power of life and death. Which one are you going to choose? Do we cut the hair or <laughs> what? Or do we feed the camels? Because sometimes <laughs> aligning with a prophetic anointing partner is a lot of stinking work. <laughs> she fed a lot of camels. She gave them a lot of water. It was a lot of work. It wasn't like, okay, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, she didn't was, turn the hose on. <laughs> yeah, she didn't turn the hose on. <laughs> nope. It was physically exhausting. Yeah. And these are people she'd never, I mean, she'd heard of them because this is this is family, right? So, you know, we're, we're actually, they're not strangers. She'd heard of them, but she'd never seen them. Um, she'd heard their reputations. Those are the things that she'd heard that she, that what came before. She, she would have known, she would have known that they came for her with Isaac because he was the son of promise. They would have known, they would have mm -hmm. known that it was crazy mm -hmm. that Abraham and Sarah had a baby. <laughs> they would have known the crazy talk. They would have known it. So this would have been a big deal. Anyone have any input on that, on that whole little unmute, say, looking misty, you always got something good. I'm taking it all in today. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Has anyone else had a hard week? It's been a, it's been an interesting week. I mean, I know Kathy, week. you have yeah. just really been pulled through. It's been emotionally hard. It's been spiritually hard. I felt yeah. the thing. I want to tell you, it's interesting this time of the month in this month that we are in is a month where people should be having dreams and visions and things are happening. So um, as much as I don't believe that there's a devil behind every rock, I do believe we have an enemy that has some strategies that can, can come in and try to bring division that can come in and maybe they're trying to bring, uh, take away your hope. And I think that this is a day that he wants to restore hope. Yes. That you might've been sitting yeah. at that well day after day after yeah. day, like really? When is this going to ever happen? And then, and really out in the sun, doing all the things, how are we going to be waiting at the well? Anticipating is today the day? Mm. Is today the day? Oh, I see camels coming. Is today, oh, today's the day. Yes, I'll go because I'm ready. It's kind of like, are the wicks trimmed? Are you ready for when he says it's time? But I feel like this, as we go into this next as we go into this month, we start, the, it gets dark sooner. We start pulling inward. We start getting a little pitiful. Like, I feel sorry for myself because this doesn't ever happen. Oh, that's just me probably. Um, this, this, and you start really inward thinking instead of inward reflecting so that you can move forward and closer into his presence and think about how can I wait better for the camels to come for me? How can yeah. I serve better? How can I get my arms strong so that when those 3,500 camels come and I have to water all of them that I'm going to be strong. My arms will be strong for this task. Instead, I'm like, can you hand me another nutty bar out of the freezer? And um, yeah, she had to be nutty. strong for this. Ooh, oh, we're fasting. Sorry. Yeah, thanks a lot, sister. Great imagery. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> let me drink. A, let me get a drink of water. Hold on. <laughs> 
It's really, this is really, this is really good. I love the, I love the whole imagery of, um, of Sarah and uh, the life that she lived. And guys, listen, I think the number one thing is that <laughs> I think the reason that I love it so much is because she wasn't perfect. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and she was the matriarch of the entire B'nai Israel and all of those who were grafted in. She's the matriarch. She wasn't perfect. She didn't always wait well. She had a lot of disappointments. She had a life that, that, you know, for 90 years, she was, well, you know, 80 year, whatever. She was facing disappointment month after month after month. She was facing disappointment and the promise that she had in her heart, that thing that, that she loved that was in her heart, her desire and her yearning. And it was so desperate and so that yearning was so powerful to bless her husband with what God had promised him that she was willing to, sh- to set aside her part of it in that sense and, and, and say, take Hagar because it's just not happening with me. So go ahead and take Hagar. And uh, I mean, how devastating. But at the same time, she was filled with hope. So she, she wasn't perfect. So ladies, in your homes, you are the matriarch of your home. You don't have to be perfect. But what you want to do is you want to serve him well. So when you're faced with these things, and we all, we all get faced with these things, when you get faced with these things, can you, can you dig into the storehouse of hope that he has placed within you and grab hold of that thing, grab hold of that hope and say, you promised, I'm going to trust you even if month after month after month after month after year after year after year, I'm disappointed. I'm going to trust you that you will never let anything thwart your plan and your purpose. If she could have seen today what came about by her standing in that place of hope and saying, all right, uh, one more time. Let's do this one more time. (laughs) Let's try this one more time. If she could see now, you know, but we can't. And the, and like Charlie said earlier, it's, it's when we don't see it, that the blessing is so intense. When we don't see the result, when we just get to trust him and we get to walk in that. And that is, I think that's why I know Charlie is too. I am torn up this week, just torn up and believing God that he will Stir those embers in every single heart of every single woman. Stir those embers up. And the things that we thought were dead, they're not dead. They just haven't risen yet. So allow him to stir the embers. It may not be comfortable. (laughs) It, you, you know, it's never comfortable. I'm smelling like smoke personally, but you know, whatever. (laughs) A lot of smolder, a lot of smoke. And in fact, yesterday my house was filled with smoke. I um, was cooking something for my husband. It cooked over onto the bottom of the oven and I was in my office with the door shut. So when I opened up the door to walk out to the house, <laughs> the whole house was billowing with smoke. And um, yeah, so I got to, got to deal with that. And that is just, it was, I was chuckling because it reminded me those things that are inside of us, sometimes there's just a lot of smoke and there's not a whole lot of flame going on, but thankfully, but that flame, I'm praying that God will ignite that within each and every one of us this week, as we complete this Torah portion, uh, you know, tomorrow night at sundown, we have until tomorrow night at sundown to just be soaking in this. And may he, may he speak life and raise up in your hoper, (laughs) in your hoper inside of you, raise that up that you can say, you know what, it's okay. I'm going to just keep on hoping and may your dry bones 
be given flesh and bone and sinew and, and meat and, and skin and all the things and strength and all the things to, to rise up. And that's my prayer over each and every one of you. And that's kind of like what I'm getting out of the book the um, this chapter of, of Sarah really getting that matriarchal blessing that she is that she pronounced in her lifetime over all of the rest of us and and those of us who are not of the blood lineage we are a, we are grafted in and that hope is ours too that's what Yeshua does for us and may we have that hope spring up a oh well within my soul yes and come forth and may we all be doing a little jig this week <laughs> when that hope bursts forth we stand on some pretty strong shoulders yes we do yes we and do and i think that as we walk through each day we we do all walk in this place of privilege and i'm not talking like critical theory here i'm just saying the place of privilege in that these women fought for our faith. Yes. We have women who set examples. We have women that we get to see how did how do we walk it out imperfectly? Imperfectly. How do we get to walk this out? And in yeah. doing so, what happens is we get, I mean, we get these shoulders, we get, I mean, the two of them, you know, to be, I don't I heard a lot about Sarah, but I never spent a lot of time on Rebecca. And all of a sudden I'm just really drawn to Rebecca this week. Yeah. I've never really spent a lot of time with her. And yeah. now I'm like, so Rebecca, tell me a little about you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> What you got? And I'm just impressed. I'm impressed that she was ready and she ran out to meet the, the, the camels before they even got there. Now, how many young girls do you know nowadays would run out and go be ready to, it would be like washing a fleet of cars. Like how many are ready to go do that? Not many. Um, I think about I think about some women, you know, we just went through a, a, a voting process. I, I personally thought, you know, I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't even want to do this. It doesn't even matter. And I had to remember the women who fought. So I had to write to do it. I had to, all the women who fought so that because it wasn't that long ago that I wouldn't even have been able to go. Only my husband would have been, I couldn't even get a checking account without his permission. But because there were women who fought for those things for me, that I was able to do that. And I can't, stand on their shoulders and just be like, oh, nice view. And I feel like that was Sarah and with Rebecca. And later we're going to see the other women, but we are standing on their shoulders. And I don't want us just to say, oh, nice view. I want us to say, what do I get to do so that the next women can stand higher? The next mm. women can walk in their faith stronger. Mm. How can I walk before you father? So they can see clearer. They can see into the land. That's what I want us to be able to do. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Because that is, you know, the Isha. That's what Isha's get to do. That's what we get to do. That's what we get to do. Hey, Brenda, isn't it mm -hmm. weird that I never knew until this year, I never knew that uh, Abraham remarried Hagar. Well, there is uh that's a very interesting point, Charlie. <laughs> Um, yeah, Keturah is um, said by some of the uh, sages that know these things, that she's actually Hagar. And so uh, she came back and lived with Abraham and they had six more kids. I, I read that in yeah. multiple locations. Has anyone yeah. else on here that knows more than us or knows anything say, yeah, I heard this before too. <laughs> no, anyone, anyone? Please does it blow your mind? Please does research it? it yourself. But I yeah. mean, it was something that in my research that as I was going through, there was, it was unanimous in everything that I found through sages, through everything is that Hagar returned after Sarah's death and bore him six more sons. Oh. Charlie, my, my husband would be doing a jig that you just said that because he says it, he said it and I, I've read it with him and I know that mm -hmm. so, um, I'm always like, but why can't they just put the name in there right? Like, it drives yeah. me crazy. Like, I know we have to dig these things out, but I'm just yes. like, why didn't they just say her name? Why? Is so, name so can that be our homework, Erica? Can it be our homework that we actually, like, let's take the name Hagar in Hebrew and let's take the name, her, her, maybe she, her name was changed. Sarah's name was changed. Maybe she had a name change. That happens because when she came back, she took a place of authority then as the first wife. 
she would have came, she would have risen up to a, a different position in that culture, which we don't understand. Did she have a name change? Now, everyone, don't be freaking out. We're not saying this is like the law that this is, oh, your salvation or we're just, this is curious stuff. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me. I have always struggled with the fact that the Holy one allowed Abraham to throw this woman out into the desert and just let her go. Even though he sends an angel to, to minister to her, to give her water. He tells her, I'm going to bless you. I'm wondering, was that him saying, yeah, I'm going to give you more sons. Don't worry. You'll be back. I mean, was that what he was saying? I don't know. But I, I always had a hard time that I thought, man, she just got kicked to the curb and it wasn't even her fault. She didn't ask to be the, a slave in Egypt given to Sarah as a gift. She didn't ask for that. She didn't ask. So I'm in my, like, that's not fair, God. And that doesn't usually go far. But <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, Brenda always reminds me fair is not a fruit of the spirit. But uh, I'm just like all about like, this is like, we need to, this needs to be corrected. You know, mm -hmm. it, it could be, it is what it is, but wouldn't it be cool, Erica? Wouldn't it be cool if that was the truth? Wouldn't it be cool if that was the redemption story that she did get to come back and she did actually get to be honored and she did get to be part of, she is part of the seed, no matter what, she is the seed of Abraham, no matter what she did birth Ishmael and he became a great nation, which is the truth. And we get to thank and believe in the full salvation and restoration and redemption of that nation, because it is God's plan to bring restoration and redemption to that. Even if they might confuse us a little right now, we can be thankful that there's a redemption plan. Always redemption. Yeah. Erica, did you have, well, I was just going to say, I think we, you know, you kind of can see hint in that, that we know that, um, you know, he showed favor to her, um, you know, that Ishmael was going to be his own nation. And then, and I know we're kind of going off topic, but one of the things that I noticed this year in the reading, it says that his other sons, um, you know, he sent them away um, yes. from his son and to, the, <clears throat> and to the East makes me think of Asia. And so I don't know where they went. I haven't um, got into that before, but it just makes me wonder if, you know, if he's the father of all nations. So these sons that he sent East, um, you know, I don't know, just something that is something I want to look into later. So uh, again, you know, from her, um, you know, more nations um, between Hagar and uh, Abraham. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. <clears throat> yeah, if, if, if it is Hagar, then that would mean that she had seven sons with Abraham. So that's significant too. Yeah, that's, that is really significant. So I mean, you know, these are the things we put toil on. So if you're new here, yeah. sorry, we just get a little great. We get a little, we're like, hmm, I wonder hmm, if. Wonder, this wonder. Is, this is wonder, place. wonder. We like wonder crazy things and we won't like tar and feather <laughs> put you on fire. Yeah. We won't do that. We'll just be like, hmm, that's interesting. Probably not, but mm, okay, check that out. Yeah. Find the truth in that. It's just kind of fun. <clears throat> you know, what's interesting about this portion too. This is actually one of the, this is the first land purchase that's, that's ever um, discussed. Yeah. Yeah. First time. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I've heard it said that the, um, you know, it's kind of, you're going to do it. I knew yeah. you're going to do it. You're going to say it. Wait, what, what am say I going to say? I don't know. I don't know. I'm probably oh. not going to say what you think I'm going to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say that the first, the, that the, um, uh, when, when the, uh, uh, debate was going on, you know, for purchasing the land. <laughs> I just love it. I'm trying to find it here. Where is it? I know it's in here somewhere. Um, <clears throat> when the debate went on, when he was um, going to purchase the land, he, he's saying, uh, uh, I want to buy the land. And the, and the guy says, oh, no, 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 I'll give you the land. Don't even worry about it. I'll just give you the land. He's like, no, no, I'll buy the land. I'll buy it at full price. No, 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 I'll give it to you. No, I'll buy it at full price. Okay, yeah. What's what's four hundred shekels between you know between us? And so what I what I had read was that that was a ridiculous amount of money. <laughs> that it was a huge, ridiculous amount of money. Four hundred shekels, like 
really? <laughs> but Abraham paid the full price in front of everybody because he wanted to make sure that it was all done, that nobody could ever put a claim to it, that it was forever and ever his and his legacy um, with his with the inheritance that he would pass on to his family, which he did. And that cave, I, um, I have heard that that cave um, was actually the resting place of Adam and Hava. Has anybody else heard that? Yeah. And that that and that that might have been why, um, why Sarah was there. Yeah. And we don't really even know why they were separated. Abraham and, and Sarah, we don't know. I mean, we can assume. There's lots of stuff that we can assume. She but, was mad. Um, huh? She was mad at him. Well, you know, uh, when, when the Holy One told Abraham to make Ola with um, Isaac, and, you know, you talked about this in the beginning, he didn't say Korban Ola. <laughs> Korban Ola is a burnt offering. He didn't say that. He said Ola. <laughs> <laughs> which is an approach. <laughs> so he interpreted that one way. And I think that uh, in, in the text, we can kind of read into it that Sarah definitely did not agree, you know, agree with that. Not what that says, Abraham. <laughs> are you, are you crazy? <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> wait, 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 oh, wait, that's just in my house. Oh, wait. <laughs> you you think you're hearing from god you need to pay attention and so what did sarah hear from god and what did abraham hear from god and in the midst of all of that so how do we deal with the conflict when we think we're hearing one thing and our spouse uh may be thinking that they hear something else and how do we deal with that taking time out in yeah. another land well uh, no, i'm just kidding you know, <laughs> yeah <laughs> she, <laughs> she took a long drive to starbucks <laughs> long drive to Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. Uh, you know what? It's interesting too. I'm read, I read in here, like in, in 24 verse six, I, 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 this stuck out to me and I, I underlined it. I was running to go get my Bible. Cause I wanted to, to remember this is that when Abraham is talking to Eleazar and he's talking to him about finding him a wife, he says in verse six, Abraham said to him, see to it that you don't return my son there. Yep. Adonai, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from my native land and who spoke to me to make me uh, a pledge saying to your seed, I will give this land. He will send his angel before you and you will take a wife for your sons from there. So it's, it's, he's saying, don't take my son there. Don't, you know, he didn't get don't, to go pick. Don't let him go. Mm -hmm. Don't let him go back don't because he knew that he go. could get stuck and he wouldn't be brought back into the promise. Right. I mean, I, I think that's something we could unpack. Like that's one mm -hmm. of those things you could sit and think about. Like what, yeah. how many times have you gone somewhere or you've allowed your children to go to, or you've sent someone and you went along and you shouldn't have because it distracted you from the promise. If he had gone, if he let him go, he knew it would be a distraction. Yeah. His feelings would have got in, in, involved in it. Well, mm -hmm. wait a minute. I kind of like girls with a little more blonde highlights. <laughs> I like her a little taller. <laughs> Maybe I like, I like it if she can hold the camel's mouth this way. I, I don't know. What's attractive to, what's attractive to a, no a man in those days. She got good hips. She could have a lot of babies. I don't know, but I think he would have got distracted. And for me, yeah. that was what I pulled out of that was that I have to be so mindful yeah. mm -hmm. of where am I going? What am I doing? What Facebook groups am I jumping into? What am I listening to? Where am I at that? What am I allowing of other people's fear, frustrations, angers, us, passionate views on things? What am I allowing to distract me from the prophetic call on my life, mm -hmm. from my purpose? Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that those things aren't real, but they would be a distraction. Him going in would have, it would, would have been, uh, there would be nothing wrong with it. However, I think it, it would have grossly distracted him. And he you would have been else? leaving the land of promise to go get yes. the wife. Yes. And he needed yes. to stay where he was. It was just like uh, Abraham was sending away. You know, we, we think of it as negative, but we don't really understand the culture or really what was going on. So this mm -hmm. would be something so fun to think about and maybe get some, you know, wisdom from others um, who know more, but he not only did he send away Ishmael, the first son, when that was Sarah's 
that was Sarah saying Abraham didn't want to do that, but Sarah insisted. So she must have had some prophetic knowledge um, and operating in a prophetic knowledge there. But then when he's married to Keturah and they have six sons, Abraham sent those sons out too. He, he sent them off because there was something that was happening with the inheritance of the land and the promise of God to bless all generations, every family for all generations would be blessed through this seed of promise, which was Isaac and his lineage, that he was not being allowed to share with anyone else. And so he stayed there. So I think that it's, I think it's really cool. Um, that's not to say that uh, the other people were not important. And guess what? They got blessed because of it too, as they will continue being blessed. Everyone did. Um, he, the Holy One didn't say, I'm going to bless almost all the families. I'm going to bless pretty much most of them, but some of them not. He didn't say that. He said mm -hmm. he was going to bless them. He was going to bless all the people all the families. <clears throat> and yeah, so there's like something kind going of on here today. There's a smorgasbord yeah, um, that we're like pulling from everything, right? There's something happening here so that we much. don't even know. I, I mean, know. I, another thing that hopped out to me, that's, I mean, that's what this is about today. We're doing the, what, what stood out to you in this portion? Yeah. This is the, uh, so unmute and tell us if there was something you're like, oh my gosh, I read this. I never saw this before. The other thing was that stuck out to me, which was hard for me. And you don't laugh. While the man continued to pay close attention to her, keeping silent in order to know whether or not Adonai had made his way successful. Hmm. They didn't sit there debating. Well, what do you think? It looks like she's good. I mean, look, she's like watering all our camels. And she's, she says that she's, she said she'll do it until they finish drinking. Hey, look, I mean, she looks nice. I mean, I can't kind of tell under that burqa, but I mean, it looks like she looks, doesn't look like she's, you know, she looks like she's could have good baby. She looks healthy. Let's see her teeth. I mean, th none of that happened. It says, he said, be quiet that they were, be they were kept silent in order to know whether or not out and I had made his way successful. Mm. Yeah. Brenda, remember good. when I was reading and, and I was reading and I can't remember where that's at. And, uh, is it in Ezekiel? And he says, and the wings, the, the wings come down. The wings come to like they're around the throne. Yes. Now I'm yes, gonna have yes, to yes. post it. There's yeah, a we'll there's a verse somewhere it. in the Bible. People have told me, and I may have read it. The wings are going. Yeah, you know, around the throne. Yeah, and it's, there's a moment when the angel's wings. It says the wings go down, so that they can hear the voice of the Lord because it's so loud with these wings. Missy's looking it up really fast. I can tell. Good deal do it she's she's our research dig it dig it yeah so i the, for this has been years since this i got this little revelation so now you may hear me say something like wings down girl wings yeah, down it's, exactly. it's a wings down girl yes. and the reason is for exactly for this yeah are we so noisy are we keeping silent in order to know whether or not adonai has made his way successful mm. are you because yeah. i'm not I'm making a lot of noise sometimes. Mm -hmm. My wings are going. Yeah. Can't hear over the flapping. Can't hear over the flapping. It's time to put our wings down, ladies. Yeah. yeah. So that we could hear if Adonai has made his way successful. Mm. Is he done? Is this it? Are you the one or should I look for another? Is this wow. the way we're supposed to go? Brenda and I are currently mm -hmm. in, the, in the process of something like that right now. Mm -hmm. And we're seeking the father. Is, is this you father? Yeah. If something looks, if something could look crazy. It could look like a, it could look crazy, but is it you? Mm -hmm. Is this you? And, and are we silent yeah. or are we spinning in what we think? You know, y'all hear me say, stop, mm -hmm. submit all your yeah. thoughts submit what you think you know about something submit all the verses you've read and translated and conjugated submit what you learned in sunday school i want you submitting all of it about whatever it is that's spinning you today mm -hmm. submit it mm -hmm. and then stand back and be silent keep silent and then say father i want to know whether you have made but this way successful yeah. yeah what which way do i need to go is this the one is this the way that I should go? 
And I promise you, I promise you, the things of earth pass away. Yes. In his glory and his grace, right? The old song, it passes away because when we truly can submit it. Now, I'm going to tell you a lot of times I have to go back to stop, submit, (laughs) stop, stop, submit, release, (laughs) listen. And before I can get to the listen and be silent, I have to go back to stop because we're on the treadmill or the hamster wheel. Yeah. I mean, this is a big deal. They have to pick out the wife. It's like picking out the wife of a king's son. Mm Mm-hmm. This is be free. This would be freaking me out. I hope she's the right one. I don't know if she's the right one. Is she the right one? I don't know if she's the right one, but they kept silent. I don't want to beat this up, but that meant, that meant a lot to me this morning. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is beautiful. I love that. Hey, we didn't even get a chance to talk about, um, the, um, the, um, half Torah or the, um, the, the Brit Hadashah. Um, can I, can we, can we just, can, can we, the, can we just look at the Brit Hadashah? Talk about women. Whew, talk about, jump. talk about strong women. What happened in the Brit Hadashah this week? Whoa. In the, in the new Testament this week, we're in John, right? John four, John four is talking. Oh, hold on, hold on to your horses here. Being Dr. Deb talked about this at the, at the summit. Um, and she just did an amazing job. So Yeshua left um, Yehuda and set out again for the Galil. And this meant that he had to pass through Shomron. He came to a town in Shomron named Shechem. Near the, near the field of um, Yaakov and given to his son, Yosef. Yaakov's well was there. So Yeshua, exhausted from his travel, sat down by the well. It was about noon. And a woman from Shamron came to draw some water. Oh, hold on a minute. Here we go. So we're, whenever, whenever we have a story that has another story that has similarities, we need to pay attention and Yeshua said to her, give me a drink of water. His Talmudin had gone into town to buy food. The woman from Shamron said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for water from me, a woman of Shamron? Uh, in English, we say Samaria, right? Okay. For, um, for Jews, don't associate with people from Shamron. And Yeshua said to her, answered her, if you knew God's gift, that is, who it is saying to you, give me a drink of water, then you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And she said to him, sir, you don't even have a bucket. (laughs) (laughs) And the well is deep. So where do you get this living water? You aren't, uh, you aren't greater than our father, uh, Yaakov, are you? He gave us this well, and he drank from it. And so did his sons and his and his cattle. Yeshua answered, Everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I will give him will never be thirsty again. On the contrary, the water I give him will become a spring of water inside of him, welling up into eternal life. And I mean, we, and it goes on and she said, give me this water. And, and uh, he said, go call your husband. And she's like, "Eh." and he's like, yeah, I know. I know your stuff. (laughs) I know. I know all those things. But he is the living water. And here he is. This is like a different scenario. Like this is a different scenario of what could have happened. (laughs) And yet at the same time, when he spoke this to this woman, she jumped on and she ran into town and the entire town came out to see him and believed him. How beautiful is that? And I just, I think that today with what everything that um, Charlie and I've been sharing, and especially with what Charlie just shared with you about, you know, stop and and allow the Holy One to, to um, reset your thinking and, um, and be quiet before him. I think that that's what happened right here. And when she was quiet before him, she received living water forever, forever, right from him. That's what we need today. We really do need his living water. It's beautiful. So 
Any thoughts on that story? I want to, I mean, a lot of us don't know, um, and um, I think it's worth repeating for if you do know, as a reminder of the significance of this woman being a Samaritan woman. Hmm. So a Samaritan woman would have been the equivalent. Now, Samaritans were, uh, they had decided that they were going to serve in a different location. They were going to do things a different way. They were gonna, they, yeah, different mountain. This is not the mountain. This is the mountain. This, basically, they were just, they were another denomination. Mm -hmm. And they were going to do it differently. Mm -hmm. It would be no different than us, uh, uh, somebody, uh, someone who um, is lighting a menorah next to their Christmas tree. And people going, <gasps> ah! what are you doing? That would have been a Samaritan, con I mean, the equivalent mm -hmm. of that. Or someone who is, is having a shrimp salad and a pepperoni and pizza and ham on Passover, equivalent. Their hearts were serving the same God. God went to go reach out to them. It wasn't about all the crazy denominational stuff. It wasn't about those things. Those things aren't what kept him from coming to see her. He specifically came. And this is one of the, this is the longest recorded conversation in the Bible. So we might, and it's with a woman at a well who isn't queen of Sheba. This is not Cleopatra. This is not uh, one of the uh, highest Sanhedrin's wives. This is yeah. a woman who he said, I'm going to come in and I'm going to radically change your life. She was at the heat of the day. She sat and waited much like, Re much like Rebecca that she's went and she waited at the well and she was at the well. She was waiting. Probably because uh, at a different time than the other women, because um, she was an outcast because she was, you know, goosey goosey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Husband number five or six ish. or ish. ish. <laughs> yeah. And, and he didn't care like, and, yeah. and if you, and I, I love already, that if you've I read, Do if you've read Dr. Robin Gold's book about uh, uh, mar marriage and divorce and remarriage or whatever, I forgot the marriage and remarriage in the Bible. I'm telling you right now, it will set you free. It will set you free of the doctrines that we've embraced that are not truths. So who knows what has happened that she, how, mm -hmm. the reasons why she's gone. He yeah. didn't care. Mm -mm. He's like, and so, yeah, you're not yeah. married to him, but anyway, I already know that a whole, whole <laughs> yeah. village, a whole village was saved because of her. Yeah. Right. Can because you imagine? She aligned with the prophecy of this man. Yeah. She listened to him exactly. much like Rebecca aligned with this yeah. prophecy and nations were saved because of her. Mm -hmm. Did it mean womb. she was perfect? No. No. So you got to, you got to remove that from your no, thinking. We will, you don't have we to be will hear about her later in a little bit of a, her deception. She's learned in the Laban camp. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's learned some tricks. <laughs> she did. She yeah. Some tricks, but she, right. But that's where we are. Right. Well, that's, that's, you know, he, cho he chose human beings. <laughs> he made us and he knew all of our faults and failings prior. I love that he sat at the, I love that he sat at the well and he's like, if you knew who could give you this, if you knew who you were talking to. Yeah. <laughs> Did you not see my name badge? <laughs> I just, I just, I just love that he had a conversation with her. And like Charlie said, it's the longest recorded conversation that he ever had. I mean, it's, it's significant and he didn't care that she wasn't perfect. He didn't say straighten up and come back to me when you leave that guy and you go back to your husband or you, you know what I mean? He didn't, he didn't say anything like that. He just, he just spoke to her right where she was. So if anybody needs to hear that today, can you just receive that? Mm -hmm. He's speaking to you right where you are. I'm not saying that you have that, but anything, anything that's keeping you and holding you back and saying, I'm not qualified. I'm not able, I'm not good enough. I'm but I did this, but if anybody knew, if anybody knew who I really was and blah, 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 all of those things, he's saying, I know you, I see you. And that's what he was saying to her. I see you. Yeah. I really, really see you. And I'm giving you from, I'm giving you part of me. And so that's what he's offering. And can we do that? Can we go mm. back to where the can we keep silent and not be judgy? Let's keep silent and not look at, and that's the one thing about in this group, 
if you're over in, you know, is this part if in the portion of the Ruta Cafe, it's all part under the same umbrella. The bottom line is, is that it's safe. It's safe for you to do it all the wrong ways. Mm-hmm. And we, and we go, yep, that was crazy, but we love you. And we're going to keep silent because we're here's some, here's some water from the well. And the more you drink, the more the other stuff goes away. You know, the more water you put into poison, you have a poisonous pool and you just keep diluting it. Eventually it dilutes away, right? Mm-hmm. You just create a little opening and the more good stuff you keep pouring in, the bad stuff kind of goes out. It's not our job. Yeah. It's just not our job. It's not our job to do that. It's our job to bring him to them. That's it. Yeah. It's our job to bring him to them and let him be the living water. Mm-hmm. Rebecca brought the water. She wasn't the water. We're not the water, but we get to align with the one who is the water. Yeah. And sometimes it's just got to carry a lot of heavy clay pots and it may feel like work, but. And it is, but. Beautiful. Anybody have want to jump in? Sandy said, oh, yes, how important to identify distractions, to ask the Lord for help to identify them so not to be distracted from serving him. Importance of prioritizing. Be still and know that he's God. And you're never too, never too far gone by Jordan Felice. Check out the lyrics. It's so in line with this discussion right now. So thank you for that, Sandy. Appreciate that. Hope I didn't forget anybody. Yeah. Go ahead, Erica. Um, I just, uh, I just love the picture of um, like the father and the spirit going to get the bride to come back for um, the groom, and um, that's just, you know, Eliezer is, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, God's help. Yeah, he's going to help, and so he our help friend of the bridegroom, right? <laughs> yep. And, um, and I just, I can't, I was looking to try to find in what I read this week where I saw it, but, um, and it may be in like one of the month studies about, um, Heshvan because it's the quiet, it was like the quiet, not nothing's going on during Heshvan. Um, but it, it, there's somewhere I read where traditionally there was like a time where the King would come out to the field. So that's when the, the, the lower people could come and see him. They could come and they didn't have, you know, they, they were not able to come up to the, to the throne to him. But when he came to the field, then he would see all of the, the people. And, um, so I instantly thought of that when it said that, um, you know, Isaac was in the field, he was meditating and he's he's not necessarily a King, but he's a prince and, and the prince is in the field and he's waiting, you know? So I just, um, love that idea that his, his bride, you know, it was just such a beautiful, it was like, you know, like the best, like, you know, maybe not a rom-com, but yeah, <laughs> but no, I feel like, like I, and I, like, I, okay. He looks I think up, it was, he looks yeah. up, you hear the music yeah. in the background. Uh, yeah. It's just, yeah. It's like one of my, probably my favorite like couple story because you also don't see alternate wives and things going on in there, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't know. It was just like this, it's like almost this from, from the idea of the father sending Eliezer to get the bride to come back to the son, yeah, to their union, yeah, to what see I mean, what we see biblically, we don't see any extra things going on there um, with other wives and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, to my knowledge, right? I don't mm-hmm. like I don't I think in that one we only see Isaac and Rebecca in that story. To me, that's like that's it, that's it right there. You know, I don't know. I read some commentary, Erica, on that about, and, and I will find it and post it in the portion, but I read commentary this week about the, there is a parallel about being waiting in the house and waiting in the field and the Mm -hmm. significance of that, that he was waiting in the field, that there's actually a really neat significance. I did find uh, Erica for you. uh, It is um, Chabad uh, has a, um, they do have an app by the way. Little, oh, you can't say it. they have an app and I'm just going to read the, the it's commentary coming from Rashi. So that's where you know where this is coming from. And it says Keturah, this was Hagar, but she called, but she was called Keturah because her deeds were as sweet as the incense offered in the Holy temple. And also because she tied up her entrance for she did not have relations with any other man from the time she separated from Abraham and that she bore him Zimram. Yokshan, Maiden, Midian, uh, Yishbak, and Shuak. 
So that was just, again, that's not, that's a commentary from the Chabad.org. So that's where that came from. Oh, that's neat. Please share with your hubby. So we're, so we, we talked a little bit about the um, women, right? We talked about this, these strong women, the matriarchal Sarah, the Rebecca. Um, and then we talked about the woman at the well. We talked about her. And then there's two other women. Um, um, Halisa challenged us to read Luke 1. And in Luke 1, it's talking about Elizabeth and Miriam, Mary. Um, you want to go there real quick? We have time? We do. Let's do it. Okay. So uh, I thought this was, this is amazing. Oh, man. Um, so, um, so the angel of the Lord came to Zechariah and um, his name was Gabriel. The angel was named Gabriel and he stood in the presence of God and it said, and I, I was sent to speak to you, to give you this good news. And, but you didn't believe me. So you have to be silent. Um, and you can until unable to speak until the day that these things take place, because he said, your wife is going to bear a son and you are going to name him John. And Zechariah was like, what? And, um, Anyway, it said, meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out because he was the Kohen for the year. So he was, they were waiting for him to come out and he was taking a really long time. And they were surprised how long he took. But when he came out unable to talk, they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple. And so then he had to write things down because he couldn't talk. Well, anyway, it goes on. This is such a, a neat chapter. Um, it says Adonai has done this for me and he has shown me favor at this is, this is okay. So when this period of the temple service was over, he returned home following this Elisheva or Elizabeth, his wife conceived, oh man. And she remained five months in seclusion saying Adonai has done this for me. He has shown me favor at this time. So as to remove my public disgrace. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city in Galil called Nazareth to a, a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph in the house of David. And her name was Miriam or Mary. Approaching her, the angel said, Shalom, favored lady. Adonai is with you. She was deeply troubled by his words and wondered what kind of a greeting this might be. What in the, what in the world? <laughs> I mean, it actually says, that in the Bible. what in the world? The angel said to her, don't be afraid, Miriam, for you have found favor, favor, Ken, favor with God. Look, you will become pregnant and you will give birth to a son and you're to name him Yeshua. He will be great. He will be called son of Ha Elyon, Adonai, God will give him the throne of his forefather, David. And he will rule over the house of Yaakov forever. There will be no end to his kingdom. How can this be, said Miriam to the angel, since I'm a virgin? And the angel said, the Ruach HaKodesh will come over you. The power of Ha Elyon will cover you. Therefore, the holy child born to you will be called the son of God. And then so it, the story goes on. And he's telling her that you have a, a cousin, uh, Elisheva, Elizabeth, who is an old woman. <laughs> All right, so we have another old woman story here, another old woman story. And everyone says that she's barren, but she's conceived a son and she's six months pregnant. Well, remember, she went into her house and didn't tell anybody. So <laughs> hmm. with God, nothing is impossible. Did you hear that? Wait, let me say that again. For with God, nothing is impossible. And Miriam said, I am the servant of Adonai. May it happen to me as you have said. And without delay, she set out and hurried to the town in the hill country of Yehuda, where Zechariah lived, entered his house and greeted Elisheva. And when Elisheva heard Miriam's greeting, the baby in her womb stirred. And Elisheva was filled with the Ruach HaKodesh and spoke up in a loud voice, how blessed are you among women and how blessed is the child in your womb. But who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Whoa, revelation by the spirit of God. For as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Indeed, you are blessed because you have trusted that promise. You have trusted that the promise of Adonai has made that Adonai has made to you will be fulfilled. And Miriam said, my soul 
magnifies Adonai, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, who has taken notice of his servant girl in her humble position. For imagine it, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. The mighty one has done great things for me. And, and it goes on. But the, thing, the, the point of all of this that I just thought was so precious was here again, we have two women. And both of them are in circumstances where neither one of them can have children. Miriam can't have children because she's a virgin girl, not married. So she can't have children. It's not possible. Elizabeth can't have children because she's old and she's stopped her period. She's not able to be, um, she's not able to conceive. And yet here, the Holy One brings this about again, another reflection of what happened with Sarah, another. And he says right there in the word, is there anything impossible? with him? Nothing. Nothing is impossible with him. So again, filling our hearts with hope, filling our hearts with, I know that it seems like this is never going to work out, but trust me, this is going to work out. I have something good planned. And can we just look at these women and say, the Holy One this week has just filled our vision and our hope and our, and our hearts with women in the Bible that have done it right, done it wrong, made mistakes, not been perfect, but he is speaking life and he's speaking life to each and every one of us right now in this, in the same way. It's just amazing. It's beautiful that the same thing that he said to Sarah, he said, yeah. is nothing too yeah. hard? Nothing. Hmm. Nope. Because yeah. nothing's, nothing is impossible yeah. with him. It's not too hard for him. So again, I just, you know, we all just wings down girls. Yeah. It's time to put your yeah. wings down. Be silent. Keep yeah. silent. Keep silent so that you can know if Adonai has made his way successful. Mm -hmm. I know Kathy, Absolutely. that's hard. It's hard when you're wanting to wail and kick and scream and, and, and worry and be mm -hmm. concerned because you have knowledge from historical knowledge of what has happened to this child. And you have had to place that child in hands that you don't trust. I just want you to know that our hearts are with you and that you're not alone. We're all over the country, all over the world, and we are behind you. Yeah. We know that your mama heart is breaking and nothing is too hard for him. And it's okay for you to not be okay right now. It's okay to have a season of grief. You can do that. Doesn't mean your faith is wavering. It doesn't mean any of those things. It, it's okay to not be okay. Let him be okay for you. Mm. I love that you ladies have been trusting us with your prayers. Mm. I love that you've felt comfortable enough with, uh, you know, presenting your requests to us so that we can join with you. And, um, and we, you know, we want to do that. We, we want to, because you're in our hearts. You know, we pray for you all the time. We, you know, you are a treasure and, uh, and he's gathered us together for a reason. Yes. You know, yes. So we've kind of had a somber day today, but it really yeah. is the season. It is the month. We, the month that we are walking through, um, it is, and I am super excited because I, I gave my book, a, I just bought the book and then I went, oh, I'll just give that one away at the, at the summit, my book, uh, Keisha's book, the one on the, the biblical new moons and the guides for celebrating. I gave my book away, but I just got mine yesterday. So I'm kind of excited to get into it. That's going to be my uh, Shabbat. Some of my Shabbat reading is kind of learning about more about what's happening. If you go to Grace and Torah, uh, she ha uh, Keisha has great YouTube videos on um, if you're looking because you're like, why is this happening in this month? Well, God, it doesn't mean we're not celebrating a moon. We're not. I mean, we're going to be celebrating some a moon shifts or everything's you know the tides and the, everything is driven by the moon and a balance with the sun we're not uh we're not worshiping we're not worshiping the moon no we're not gonna be like dancing around rocks and you know at under the you know waving our little things that's not happening but what we are doing is we're honoring the fact that this mo new moon is brought in and that's biblical he's you know it's biblical that we are to blow the shofar in a new moon and we're to understand we know this yeah 
certain things happen in certain, certain seasons. There's a time and a season. If you're noticing, why do I always feel like this right now? Why do I feel kind of pulled in and quiet and reflective? Mm -hmm. It's because that's what he's called us to do. We can't all be all, <laughs> all year long. There's seasons for things. And so he, it's a time for us to just kind of pull it in put in, take some reflection. I'm excited. I'm praying for all of you to have amazing dreams that you just yes. prophetic dreams that start birthing inside of you during yes. the season. We have a, 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 what, a couple more weeks of, uh, of this moon or no, one more week next week. So if mm -hmm. anyone's interested, we're going to do a prayer night with, as the new moon, Rosh Kodesh, the new moon, we're just going to do a prayer night. We'll do it on zoom. We'll post it. We'll just come on here and pray. That's it's just prayer. We're not going to like you know, make you put flowers on your head and wear white dresses. I thought that was the dress code. Oh, I thought, I thought we got to wear flowers in our hair. <laughs> flowers in our hair. Yeah. But we want to do that. We want to just be able to start the months off with prayer yeah. and, and yeah, for sure. That's part of the biblical calendar. So I've never, I've yeah. never recognized it. Yeah. It's all, new. Of it. all it's, new to us. It's all new to us. We want to be in alignment with if, 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 Yeshua did it. We want to do it. And so we're mm -hmm. kind of just anyone on here right now where you have you done new moon stuff. Has anyone new moon prayer? Not, you have Erica. Erica, you want to share just a minute? Do you mind like what, what your testimony of that? Sure. Um, we started. Um, oh, I, I must have been last year, I think. Um, around tabernacles time last year, 2019. Um, I was aware of the new moon stuff I've been following Keisha for a while and so um I had gotten the book and started reading through it and a friend of mine at our assembly I was telling her about it she was super interested in it so um it kind of started with us in reading and actually um okay give me like one second I'll be right back it's right here <laughs> Do 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 so Go. I don't know if you can see this, but my friend Rhonda, she's on here sometimes. She's a teacher, so right now she's not on here, but um, she she's on the the portion. But she makes those um, for us uh, at the beginning of the month. So we go through. I uh, we watch the videos that Keisha has, and then um, we do we read through the book, which is just like the snippet of what's on the video. Like you you need to watch the video too. If you get a chance, I listen to it going back and forth to work usually. And um, and then uh, we will Zoom because our congregation is a little scattered. So she's in Chicago. Um, we got some in Wisconsin, some everywhere. So um, we have decided we Zoom whenever we can, but now we're gonna try to do it on the Sabbath before the new moon. So whoever is actually at assembly that day, um, we'll get together and we'll also Zoom it for the ladies who aren't there right now. And, um, and then our assembly itself is, is just starting to do new moon um, sighting celebrations. So on Monday night, um, those of us who are local in the congregation will go up and sight the new moon and do some praise and worship and pray and blow the shofar. Wow, sounds fun. That's fun. You know, and we're, some of us are so sad that, you know, we're releasing some of the, some of other customs that we have maybe grown up with. I realized that I hadn't replaced it with any of the other like festivals or the celebrations and even the se times and seasons. I wasn't really aligned. I hadn't really followed any of that. I, no one had ever taught me how. So for all of you to know, this is new for me as much as I love Torah and I've been learning and teaching and walking through trying to observe Torah and <clears throat> pursuing Torah life. I didn't really understand the times and the seasons and the calendar. And so th as I walk this out, please I want, I want to walk it out as transparent with you. So, you, you know, some of you are going to be like, what do you mean? She doesn't know how to do that. Yeah. I'm the one who doesn't know how to do that. So I'm going to ask the questions that someone else might be afraid to ask. Um, I'm going to remember what it felt like the first couple of times I did this and what I was, when I missed, when I missed, I wanted to sing some Christmas carols and how do I walk that out? Or I want to go hang out with my friends. I want to be the real, you know, I want to be that, that person who's like the, that you can, you can feel comfortable with. Um, that I have, I'm not so far removed because I've been walking in it so long. I forgot the journey getting, getting to that place. I hope that makes sense. And saying that I'll let y'all know that on November 29th through December 3rd, it's a Sunday night through a Thursday night at seven o'clock central time, eight o'clock, we'll say eight o'clock Eastern time. So you can do your math backwards, eight o'clock Eastern time every night at that night, we're going to do a boot camp. 
And so we're going to start the first night is going to be an intro. Misty is going to actually be teaching that night. She's going to teach on, you know, okay, so now I decided I'm going to follow Torah. Like, what does that look like? How do I do that? How do I tell my friend? How do my family think I'm in a cult? What do I, you know? <laughs> And I would, how, and the second night is going to be about Shabbat. Uh, how do we, what, what does Shabbat look like? And how do we walk that through? And not necessarily the traditions of man walking that through where I have to like say all the things in Hebrew and I have to put all the, maybe some of you don't do that. And you're like, that, because that's tradition doesn't align with who you are, but maybe it's just that you just have a nice dinner and you, you bring in the day and you rest and we want to give practical applications on what that looks like. And we're going to have panels, everybody, any, you're all welcome to be on there to help as part of that panel, getting in there and helping give your, you, if you're one of the newbies, help me and some of my stuff, I'm newbies for our baby newbies that are coming in, that we help them process this because you know that it's like crazy. And some of the other groups, you ask a simple question and it's like, you've just like crucified Jesus again by asking that question. And so you have to be, we want a safe place for these ladies to say, I don't know how to do that. What do you guys do? And we want to tell mm -hmm. funny stories. Like Dr. Deb told us a funny story about her first Shabbat. She, she served like shrimp scampi or something for dinner and <laughs> like how we, we can all have the fun stuff that can, it's okay. It's cause it's a, it's a heart is your heart in the place of Shabbat. Not about all these actions. Of course we want to, you know, align with as much as we can, but what things are, are, is he saying we really have to do? What are some traditions of man we've maybe tried to catch on that might not fit with you? And then the next night, we're going to talk about the calendar. We're going to be going into times and seasons and calendars. And how do we talk to our family? We're not, I don't, if you're not going doing Christmas, do you or don't you do that? There are some people who are in transition. They really are lighting a menorah next to the Christmas tree. Yay, you. Yay that you've started, you know. We're not going to judge. We're not going to be, we're not going to, the Samaritan woman at the well, we, I've, I'm the Samaritan woman at the well. I have been the person who has the Christmas tree and the menorah out. So don't judge. That has been, there is a process we go through and we get to love each other through that. And then the next one we're going to do is uh, food laws. <clears throat> what does that even mean? And why, why do we care what we eat? And it's the new day now we've had refrigeration who even cares? We're going to go through the food laws. And I believe Dr. Gold, Robin Gold is going to go through that. She does have a book. One of her Becky books is put, published and saw on the food law. So she's really great at it. And you guys know how funny awesome. she is. So she's, she's gonna, it's hysterical. fun and she's real. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's it. And then, the, and then we're going to do Q&A on Thursday night. And it's just an, like an hour, hour and a half each night. It will be recorded. If you are a member of the Rooted Cafe in, our, in the cafe, that recording will be in your portal. You'll also get audio podcast private links for that. If not, you can buy the private links, uh, that podcast, that audio pass for $20. Cause I'm not going to, we're not going to live stream anywhere. It's just, you can come in lot. You can register. I'm putting it everywhere to go in there to go register for it. Um, register for the event. And then it'll be in a zoom platform like this is how it's mm -hmm. going to work. Cool. And, and how can you help two ways? And then we'll let you go two ways. You can help. <laughs> Hi, everyone on the replay, by the way. We love you so much. Yes, we uh, do. Two things. You can, one, the most important thing is pray. Yes. Please, yes. please yes. pray for us. We have never before felt like we have felt recently that we we need your prayers. We need your prayers. Yeah. We need your prayers. Like, yeah. put us on your top, your list, like under your children, then put <laughs> us. Wait. Well, but the cafe, I, I don't know. I might want to be ahead of your Love kids, the children. Yeah, I might, I might we'll just put on there. We need prayer. Sorry, not sorry. We really just need the covering. We need that. We need a, a prayer team covering for sure. We need yeah, to we know do. that we have team, that we have women that are surrounding us in prayer because we want yeah. you to know, we call your names out and yes, we're praying we do. over you and we're, I wake up every morning. How do we serve them? How do we bless them? What, what's the, what do you say, father? What is it? Yes. Cause I have, I have crazy ideas but what do you say, God, you know, let me listen mm -hmm. to make sure it's you. Okay. That's the one way. The second way that you can help is would you email us info at the rooted cafe.com. And remember cafe is a K I need your funny stories or your sad stories or what happened on the, your first Shabbat or how did you walk through this or a funny story about how you told, you know, my daughter was telling her grandma when she said she couldn't eat pepperoni pizza or she said, well, grandma, <laughs> if I can say no to a pepperoni pizza, then I can say no to drugs. I mean, she, I mean, funny stories. Maybe if you come up with something as you have 
navigated maybe a challenge that you have would you send me all those stories i'd like to put a workbook together that the ladies that come to this that come to this boot camp can know that there are women like them who weren't all perfect and didn't show up with their prayer shawl all and speaking hebrew and lighting candles that that's this was how I showed up the first time I, I mean, sisters, if you saw, like I lit, lit like the fake candles, you know, you just turn them on underneath you just, and that may or may not still happen. You turn the flick, the thing <laughs> on at the bottom. <clears throat> Do you know what I'm talking about? They flicker, they look real, they flicker. I mean, I, I live in a, I live in a fifth wheel, right? So I'm a, a full-time RVer. So lighting fires in here is not always a good idea, but I want you just to, to help me out. Can you do that? Is that good? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. And also, uh, if you want to be on our prayer team, if you're interested in take in being part of our prayer team, because we're setting up a prayer team, then um, you can either send your name and request that you want to do that to info at the rootedcafe.com. I put it in the comments here. Um, or you can message me. Message me. I think all of you've got my messenger. So yeah, yeah you can do that. There's also at Brenda dot the rooted cafe at gmail uh yeah brenda's pulling together a prayer team and we want you to just be like oh yeah i'll pray no she's like we need some hardcore prayers that are like yeah. during a boot camp you're like on your knees for that hour of that boot camp we need those kind of prayers the people who are and that doesn't mean you're bad i'm not that person i'd be like is it over is it time to get up can we eat so i'm not that person i'm just being honest i love to pray but i pray all the time i'm I'm not a prayer team person. So don't feel bad if you don't feel called to that. Yeah. No shame in it. No shame. Okay. It'd be Brenda dot the rooted cafe at gmail.com. Brenda dot the rooted cafe at gmail.com. Thanks okay. everybody. We sure love you. Thank you all you guys. And we love you. thanks for hanging out with us today. Thank you. We so appreciate you. If you're feeling solemn and kind of pulled in, embrace that. Embrace it. Embrace it. Don't try yeah. to make yourself all hyper when you're not feeling hyper. It's just, it's part of the season. It's a time yeah. right now to be reflective and just to yeah. pull inward and, and hear his voice. And I just thankful. And I'm thankful, Father. I ask that all the Eliezers that you have sent forward for each one of these women, the Eliezers that you've sent out, the prophets, the people that you've sent out to do work on their behalf, to choose things on their behalf, to bring things to them on their behalf, that they would not be distracted, that those people would have safe journeys. And I pray that every woman here, Father, that they would know that they know that there is a call and a mission on their life, mm -hmm. that they would feel the fan blowing those embers in them, and it is not dead. It is time. It's yes. time to arise, grab your yes. tambourines, yes. be the Miriams that you're called to be. Let them feel that. Let them feel it. And at the same time, allow them to have that time where they, they're still before you, their wings are down and they're silent so that they know that they know that you have accomplished. They see the path, they hear the wisdom, and they can walk in the way that you tell them to go. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father, that you've called each one of them to partner, be a prophetic partner in your yes. plan. Align with Yeshua HaMashiach as their partner, as their, as their groom, to be that prophetic partner, to bring change and bring love and to bring redemption to this world. Amen. Man, we love you guys so much. And are we, you want to?